Shane in Toronto. Whoop. No. Mm. Shane. Oh, you didn't. Shane? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Hello, Shane. Hello. Can you guys hear me? We can yes. hear you. All right, cool. So I, uh, I called in. I wanted to talk about, um, it wasn't really the topic of, that you put up, but I hope that's okay. No, yeah, I know. No. We never stick to a topic. Okay. <laughs> Just go. Um, I want to talk about uh, Islam, and uh, quickly I want to say that I, I was born into Islam from my parents, mostly from my dad, mm -hmm. okay. and um, I basically, I, I believe in it, but I'm more, I'm more so questioning it now, because mm -hmm. I, uh, it, I, I just find it hard to believe that there's some, some higher being, but I think the, I think what the Quran has is kind of still pulling me toward uh, that it's true. So I, I think I'm more of an agnostic kind of Islamic person. Okay. Um, and I wanted to know. Uh, I wanted to ask you something quickly. Uh, there was there was some. Uh, I think it was the prophecy of Muhammad, where it was 1,400 years ago, where he he wrote all these verses about the universe and and they were known to be true like for example how like he barely he ba it was kind of vague he kind of talked about the big bang and how the universe is accelerating oh uh, well that. well and hold on a minute do yeah. you actually have those specific verses where he was that detailed about the big bang uh like i said he, he I don't think he was that detailed in it. Yeah, I mean that's the thing about prophecies. If you say anything, if you say something vague enough, then hundreds of years later, people who want to think that you're a magical prophet will read into what you wrote, the very vague things that you wrote. Uh, it's yeah. easy to sort of superimpose stuff that they already think and know over verses that really have had nothing to do with that. When but but I know what you're referring to specifically, and um, okay. I, I can, and I think the easiest thing for me to do would be to link this uh, on on our blog again. So I'll do that after the show tonight. Uh, there is a series of YouTube videos that uh, has been posted by you know people who have studied the. In fact, I think. Um, these come from you know somewhere in the I'm not exactly sure but I, I think somewhere in the Arab world you know these were created essentially they are uh, rebuttals to the claims that the Quran contains scientific knowledge that you know could not have been known by anyone else at the time therefore it was probably divinely revealed um, yeah. you know these claims of uh, um, scientific facts well, centuries ahead of their time in, in the original Quran. There, there is a series of videos that are very deep. You know, I hate, hesitate to you know, recommend YouTube videos to people because everyone <laughs> sends us YouTube videos and they're like, you watch our YouTube video. No, you watch ours. No, mine's better. Not like that. But, but I've watched these and they're very good. And what I can do is on our blog tonight, I'll put a link to uh, that series of videos and, um, you know, and, and then you can watch those and sort of judge for yourself. Okay. All right. Um. I, I mean, it's not just Islam. A lot of different religions like to take vague languages out of their holy book, and even non-religions. I mean, like, there, there was this French prophet in 1654, Nostradamus, who supposedly precisely predicted the, uh, the World Trade Center attack in 2001. Um, and the verse that everybody quotes says... Uh, in the city of God there will be a great thunder, two brothers torn apart by chaos. While the fortress endures, the great leader will succumb. The third big war will begin when the big city is burning. And people, people are all over that. They're like, look how precisely it, it uh, predicts the, this exact thing that happened. Yeah. And yet, the language is so nonspecific. I mean, the, the, one of the things they latch onto, for instance, is two brothers torn apart by chaos. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly like the Church World Trade Center because there are two things. Uh -huh. And that's really what, all they have to go on. And I feel like if you look at these Islamic prophecies more closely, you already said it yourself. They're not very specific. And after an event has happened or after a scientific discovery has been made, it's easy to look back on words that are that general and try to make, make sense out of them by claiming they were a prophecy for an event that that other person really didn't know about. OK. 
Okay. Um, what what I still want to ask quickly is, there are things like how the universe started, like with the Big Bang and everything, and even though it's vague, I mean, it's it's something that they really couldn't know back then, and there's no... Yeah, like they, they didn't. No That's my point, yeah. Or, well, the, the, the point is, is that you're right. I mean, they could not have known the physics of it. Uh, yeah. In fact, to, even today, <laughs> physicists, I think, are arguing the finer points of it. Uh, but, uh, you know, for example, there were, uh, there were people back in ancient days who thought that the sun uh, might have been a chariot drawn by a god carried across the sky. But then there were other thinkers who thought, well, maybe it's not that. Maybe it's something else. Uh, maybe the sun is similar to these other points of light we see in the sky at night that we call stars, only the stars are farther away, and the sun is just the one that lights our world. Uh, there was um, an, uh, an individual in the Middle Ages, European scientist by the name of Giordano Bruno, who actually advanced that hypothesis, that all the stars in the sky at night were incalculably long distances away from us, that the sky was not in fact a firmament as uh, many uh, Christians believed, and, uh, and the sun was just a star like all of those. Uh, he was executed for this, you know, this heresy. Uh -huh. So, but again, you think of back then in his day, you know, there would not really have been a way to measure light years. They didn't have a concept for that. They, they, there would, there's not a way, for example, like astronomers have today of peering through a telescope and looking at the star and calculating the length of time the light would have gotten here, et cetera, et cetera, and then that's how far away the star is. Didn't have all of that, but you could still make some general conclusions, and that's probably, you know, it's not unlike, you know, what you may, what may be, you know, what may appear in some of these Quranic passages. So, but we're going to move on, but uh, well, thank you. Uh, actually, I have, uh, I have one other question. Okay. Not every yeah. Muslim believes in the Big Bang, isn't that right? I mean, there are Muslim creationists like uh, Harun Yahya, oh, who, who, who's a young earther yeah, and doesn't I, think that the Big Bang is even true. Yeah, my, I, I, my dad uh, actually does not either believe in the Big Bang either. Yeah, so I mean, if the Quran is so clear about uh, about exactly what the Big Bang was, how is it that uh, very sincere Muslims aren't getting this message? Um, I think he believes that we did all start from the same same thing, which is kind of what the Big Bang is, but they, they believe just some, that there's some creator who kind of pushed toward this. Right, but, so, but I mean, I, if you take the standard scientific approach that the, that the universe came into existence in its current form, like 14 billion years ago, yeah. it, uh, Islam creationists are wrong, at least according to scientists. And so yeah, there, I, there's not this amazing concordance uh, between the Quran and the scientific understanding. Yeah, I, I agree that my, my dad doesn't uh, look into the evidence as much as uh, he probably uh, as I would want him to. Well, but, but do you think he didn't read the Quran hard enough to see what you saw? I think he interpreted it in a different way. and that's, that's the problem. That's yeah. Maybe, so, yeah. Yeah. To getting back to the Nostradamus thing, right? It's all, inter it's all in the interpretation. And the yeah. thing about a, a science text is that it's pretty clear on its facts. Uh, you know, they don't, there, there's no scientific... <laughs> You know, there's no interpretation of a paper. If it doesn't yeah, spell out its facts clearly, then it's not a Last week, actually, paper. I mentioned right. that if you read Richard Feynman's lectures on physics, he's an, he's an incredibly clear writer, and two people cannot come at, uh, at Richard Feynman's lectures on physics and really c both consistently support some wildly, radically different interpretations of it, because Richard Feynman said what he meant. Mm -hmm. And... You know, Allah, if he wrote the Quran, is not a very clear author if he can allow you and your dad to both come up with these different conclusions like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And, th and that, that, that's sort of how, that's sort of why I'm questioning it, because uh, I agree that it's not clear, and I would think that some higher being would want to make it clear for us, not, not make us work so hard to try to interpret it the right way. 
You'd think so. Yeah. But, I mean, on the yeah. other hand, it's totally consistent with just some guy writing down what strike him at the time as profound thoughts. Or, or <laughs> many, many scribes over many yeah, years. Yeah, I'm so not on. sure. Well, yeah, okay. There's, yeah, so. Right, yeah. But that's uh, interesting points, Shane. So, uh, okay, yeah. thanks for the okay. call. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for taking my call. All right. Certainly. You Keep have a good day. Questions. All right, you too. Bye. Bye.